Assalamualaikum everybody. I will begin Ziyarat Ashura. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa al Muhammad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Assalamu alayka ya ibn Rasulullah Assalamu alayka ya ibn Amir al-Mu'mineen Wa ibn Sayyid al-Wasiyin Assalamu alayka ya ibn Fatimata Sayyidat al-Nisai al-Alameen السلام عليك يا صار الله وابن صار والوتر الموت السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حل دفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بكيت بكي الليل والنهار يا أبا عبد الله لقد أزمت الرزية وجلت وأزمت المصيبة بك علينا وعلى جميع أهل الإسلام وجلت وأزمت مصيبتك في السماوات على جميع أحل السماوات فلعن الله أمة أسست أساس الظلم والجور عليكم أحل البيت ولعن الله أمة دفأتكم عن مقامكم وأزالتكم أن مراتبكم التي رتبكم الله فيها ولعن الله أمة كتلتكم ولعن الله الممحدين لهم بتمكين من كتالكم فرئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم ومن أشيائهم وأتبائهم يا أبا عبد الله إني سلمان من صالمكم وحرب من حربكم إلى يوم القيامة ولعن الله آل زياد وآل مروان ولعن الله بني أمية كاتبا ولعن الله ابن مرجانا ولعن الله أمر ابن سعد ولعن الله شمرا ولعن الله أمة نسجت وألجمت وتنكبت لكتالك بأبي أنت وأمي لقد أزم مصابي بك فأسأل الله الذي أكرم مقامك وأكرمني بك أن يرزقني طلب صارك مع إمام منسور من أحل بيت محمد صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم اجعلني عندك وجيها للحسين في الدنيا والآخرة يا أبا عبد الله إني أتكرب إلى الله وإلى رسوله وإلى أمير المؤمنين وإلى فاطمة وإلى الحسن وإليك بموالاتك وبالبراءة ممن قاتل ونسب لك الحرب وبالبراءة ممن أسس أساس الظلم والجور عليكم وأبرأوا إلى الله وإلى رسوله ممن أسس أساس الظالم 
و بنی علیه بنیانا و جرا فی ظلمهی و جارهی علیکم و علی اشیائکم برعتو الالله و علیکم منخم و اتکربو الالله ثم علیکم بموالاتکم و موالات ولیکم و بالبراءتی من اعدائکم و الناس بینا لکم الحرب و بالبراءتی من اشیائهم و اتبائهم انی سلم لمن صالمکم و حرب لمن حاربکم و ولیون من ولاکم و عدوون من آداکم فاسأل الله الذي أكرمني بمعرفتكم ومعرفة أوليائكم ورزقني البراءة من أعدائكم أن يجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثبت لي عندكم كدم صدق في الدنيا والآخرة وأسأله أن يبلغني المقام المحمود لكم عند الله وأن يرزقني طلب الصار مع إمام هدى ظاهر ناطق بالحق منكم وأسأل الله بحقكم بالشأن الذي لكم عنده أن يؤتيني بمصابي بكم أفضل ما يؤتي مصابا بمصيبة مصيبة ما أعظمها وأعظم رزيتها في الإسلام وفي جميع السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعلني في مقام هذا ممن تنالوا من صلوات ورحمة ومغفرة اللهم اجعل محيا يا محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتي مماتا محمد وآل محمد اللهم إن حاز يوم تبركت به بن أمية وابن آكلة الأكباد اللئين ابن اللئين على لسانك ولسان نبيك في كل موتن وموكف وكفى فيه نبيك اللهم العان أبا سفيان ومآبيا ويزيد ابن مآبيا عليه منك العنة أبد العابدين وخاز يوم فرحت به آل سياد وآل مروان بقتلهم الحسين صلوات الله عليه اللهم فزائف عليهم اللعن منك والأذاب الأليم اللهم إني يتكرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موكفي هذا وأيام حياتي بالبراءة منهم والعنة عليهم وبالموالاة لنبيك وآل نبيك عليه وعليهم السلام اللهم الآن أفضل ظالم زلم حكا محمد وآل محمد وآخر طابع له على صالك اللهم العن الإصابة التي جاهدت الحسين وشايعت وبايعت وطابعت على كتلت اللهم العنهم جميعا السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح 
وحنتي حنت بثنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بكيت وبكي الليل والنهار ولا أجعل الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي ابن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم خص أنت أول ظالم باللعن مني وابدأ به أول ثم الأنسان والصالص والرابع اللهم الأن يزيد خامسا والأن أبيد الله ابن زياد وابن مرجانا وعمر ابن سعد والشمراء وآل أبي سفيان وآل زياد وآل مروان إلى يوم القيامة سجود اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مصابح الحمد لله على عزيم رزيتي اللهم ارزقني شفاءة الحسين يوم الورود وثبت لي كدم صدق عندك مع الحسين وأصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا محجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد
एक नार सलवार अर्जो समा हुसैन के जन्नत हुसैन की अर्जो समा हुसैन के जन्नत हुसैन की जाओ जहाँ वही है हुकूमत हुसैन की जाओ जहाँ वही है हुकूमत हुसैन की अर्जो समा हुसैन के इस्लाम क्या हिसफ इतात हुसैन की इस्लाम क्या हिसफ इतात हुसैन की ईमान क्या है दिल से मोहब्बत हुसैन की ईमान क्या है दिल से मोहब्बत हुसैन की अर्जो समा हुसैन के बड़ मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद सलवार ये कौन कर भला को गबा बना रहा है ये कौन कर भला को बाबा बना रहा है तो ही को ये किसका सजदा बचा रहा है ये कौन कर भला को गबा बना रहा है जिसके गले के बो से लेते थे खुद मुह मद 
जिसके कले के बो से लेते थे खुद मोहम्मद जालिम उसी गले पे खंजर चला रहा है ये कौन कर को काबा बना रहा है मकतल में इस तरह से पिखरा यतीम कास मकतल में इस तरह से बिखरा यतीम कास चुन चुन के टुकड़े मोला लाशा बना रहा है ये कौन कर को काबा बना रहा है आगोश में जो माँ की सो होता था प्यासा गई आगोश में जो माँ की सोता था प्यासा गई आगोश में लहद की बाबा सुला रहा है ये कौन कर को काबा बना रहा है मुझको तमाश मारे कानों से दूर है छीने मुझको तमाश मारे कानों से दूर है छीने अब हंस के मुझको जालिम तेरा सर दिखा रहा है ये कौन कर को काबा बना रहा है मर मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद सलोद क्या सिर्फ मुसलमान के प्यारे हैं हुसैन चरग नो बशर के तारे हैं हुसैन इंसान को बेदार तो होने हो लेने दो हर कौम पुकारेगी हमारे हैं हुसैन रफली ट्रांसलेटेड इज इट ओनली टू मुस्लिम दैट बिलवेड इज हुसैन द स्टार ऑन द क्राउन ऑफ द ह्यूमन रेस इज हुसैन लेट मैन खाइंड शेड द वेल ऑफ इट्स इग्नोरेंस वेक अप एवरी नेशन विल क्राई आउट आवर्स इज हुसैन May Allah make our reward great for our grief of Imam Hussain alayhi salam respected scholars elders brothers and sisters in faith assalamu alaikum
Let us pray that our faith be strengthened and our spirits elevated, inshallah. We are truly blessed to be able to come together under one roof here at CFK as a community. This is possible due to our sustaining members and program sponsors. On behalf of us all, Jazakallah. May Bibi Zahra, inshallah, increase your barakat and tawfiqat. Ameen. For details on how to become a sustaining member or a program sponsor, please join the CFK WhatsApp group or visit ckdfw.org. Let us recite a Surah Fatiha for, the, for Marhum Ashfaq and Shahnaz Nanjiani, Marhum Muhammad Raza Anwar Ali Pardhan, and the Marhumin of Fazl, Mirali, Nathani, and Panju families, Brother Nader and Sister Saba Nanjiani and family, Brother Arif Sayyid and family, Brother Zahid Jafri and family, all our marhumin and marhumin of the ummat. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. A quick reminder of the program. In a few moments, the Sheikh will ascend the member, continuing the topic of this ashra, building a Husseini community, followed by Matam Dari, ending with Salat and Malgoban and Niyaz. For tomorrow, Adhan will be at 1.30 p.m., followed by Khutbah and Namaz Juma, led by Sheikh Mahdi Shah uh, A brief announcement regarding uh, the bathrooms. Uh, the sisters are, as, are requested to please use the bathroom right at the entrance of the sisters area. Please avoid using the bathrooms on the left. Those are the men's bathrooms so that uh, we're all in our own bathrooms, inshallah. Now it is my honor to invite the Sheikh to please ascend to the member. Bar Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, salawat. Bring it up. We can hold, yeah, I think we can hold this. Excellent. Thank you so much. Salamun alaikum wa rahmatullah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والصلاة على رسول الله وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المتجبين سيما بقية الله في الأرضين عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف ولعنة الله على آدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين السلام عليكم يا باصر جل الله تعالى فرجو الشريف Tonight إن شاء الله as we continue our conversation, discussion, exploration of the theme of building Husseini community, developing Husseini community, and maintaining Husseini community. Over the past two nights, first, we had an introduction on the concept of community from a Quranic standpoint, incredibly briefly, what the contemporary literature tells us, and why the mission of Imam al-Husseini alayhi salatu wasalam as stated in his own words, was the restoration and the reform of the prophetic community. So we are also aspiring towards discovering that and being a part of that movement, being a part of that change. 
Last night, we spoke about the first or one of the important steps towards building and maintaining this community, and that is through the building of the individual. And for us to be in relationship in a way that we care for each other's welfare, we must begin in building those strong relationships within our families. So we started last night with a very powerful way of uncovering what it means to plant the seed and imagination of community in the mind of our children. We made this qualification yesterday that child does not mean adolescent. It means someone who is in one side of that relationship with the parent, brother, sister. So we said purpose is important. Finding meaning in life is important because without purpose, we don't have a sense of direction. We don't have drive and motivation. And we find it difficult to persevere in difficult times. And we may become distracted in the good times. So we need purpose in our lives. And we also said, how can we help our children find purpose in life? What we want to do is to underscore, to make them understand somehow that they are important and what they do matters. Put ourselves right now just for a moment in the perspective of the child. The child is constantly on the receiving end of instruction. In the moment that they're born, they're observing. And because the child is incredibly impressionable, they're taking in everything that is happening and that is forming who they are, how they see the world, and how they interact with the world. Because of the way that we generally understand our role as parents, we think that our function is to constantly give orders one after another. So the child from the early age is inculcated in a relationship in an environment of what? Taking orders, receiving orders. Now, a person who is only an order taker, that person seldomly has the opportunity to think for themselves. And even more than that, it sends the message that your role is only to receive. Your role is not to produce. So you are only a consumer of the instruction that someone else gives you. Who is that someone else? Someone that stands atop you in authority. Someone who is more qualified. Someone who is more intelligent. What does that tell the child? It tells them implicitly, and sometimes we exceed that and make it explicit, that you are not important and what you do is not important. And if it is, it's not as important as the person who stands atop you. That's a problem. So the child lives life, and especially during those periods where we explored that development of purpose in adolescence, there's a void there that many times fails to be filled. And when they enter their adult lives, they are surrounded by a world that tells them that their work is not important, so they seek refuge in the comforts of life. And that is the only logical solution to this type of a life. So we're trying to kind of deconstruct where we find ourselves today. Our job was not to throw in the towel and say, this is the end of times and it's so bad, so we can't do anything about it. No. Okay. So five things we said we can do to help. Plant the seed of purpose, meaning in life. Number one, in honoring our children, we have to remember that as parents, as elders, as those in relationship and community, our job is not to define their purpose in life. Our job is to be a follower and someone who fans the flames. So it is for us to encourage them to find their own purpose in life. Number two, it is for us to convey the meaning and the purpose that we found in our lives and in the work that we do to our children. We have to find a way to communicate and articulate that to them. And perhaps in the process 
of communicating that, we find that there are some immaturities, there are some undeveloped or underdeveloped parts, even in our construction of purpose. So we work on it. Number three, we find them mentorship and we use the support that is the crux of community, that means other members, to aid in the development and in the evolution of their purpose. It is not for you and I to be fully responsible towards raising our children. We are supposed to work together. So we have to have a network and a system that is conducive towards mentorship and the support of finding and developing purpose. Number four, to encourage an attitude, which again we said in the literature, renders it entrepreneurial. Encourage your kids to aim high and for them to believe that they can achieve the goals and the dreams that they have. Don't belittle them. Allow them with moderated and controlled risk to make mistakes. Again, as parents, our most important concern is the protection, right, of the child. So if the child wants to engage in risky behavior, that already is problematic because I don't want my child to experience pain. So what do we do then? We eliminate risk. And the elimination of risk is tantamount to the elimination of creativity and finding purpose. Okay. And number five. Number five is for us to treat our children as our equals. Equals not in the sense that they have the same experience as us in life. Equals in their participation and contribution in community. They are not second class. So as they are now, each and every one of them is tasked with finding purpose and realizing purpose. So that's what we said last night. So now we arrive at the next stage and the next level. We said we started with the children because generally we speak much of the position and the stature of the parents, but a lot of times we forget to focus on the children. So we started that way last night. Tonight we're going to look at the other side now. To all the children in the audience, and that's everyone, your parents are not your enemies. Your parents are not your competitors. Your parents at the core want what's best for you. Even though, and this is an important qualification, even though sometimes in their designation of what is best, there may be some inaccuracies or it may be skewed. But the fundamental point is the same. They want what's best for you. They want what's good for you. Okay. So we lay those kind of truisms in the relationship between child and parent. But what we're here to do is to begin to peel back the layers of how we can be in communal relationship with them, to build community with them, with parents. We have to acknowledge the importance of being, having the gratitude towards our parents. And I want to have some real talk tonight. Real talk with second generation, third generation. Okay, Those of you who didn't emigrate here on your own, those of you who came as a consequence of the emigration and the decision that your parents made. We're going to have just a few minutes of real talk. Okay. First, let's establish the ground rules. The Quran is very clear. On a number of occasions, 13 times at least, the Quran speaks about being obedient to the parents. Okay. Of showing kindness Love, affection, mercy to the parents. That's to kind of push back against this idea that my parent is competing with me. 
My parent wants to control me. That's not the point. Okay. In our aspirations to find happiness in life, we want our parents to be facilitators, supporters, not for them to be impediments. Okay. Let's go through a few examples and a few stories of what happens when we're able to find that good relationship. Then in the meantime, we'll have, in the middle of it, we'll have someone that we'll talk to. All right. Let's consider. Consider the relationship that you have with your parents right now. The good times, the bad times, the difficult ones, what you want to say to them, what weighs on your heart. Okay. Sometimes as children, we get frustrated with the decisions that our parents make. Sometimes our parents do and say things that we know is not right. Just because they're our parents, it doesn't mean that they're infallible or they also have been given permission and divinely sanctioned to oppress other people, to say whatever they want to say, to act however they want to act. Yet, we are still obligated to treat them respectfully. Okay, here's one account from one of the Ashab of Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu wassalam. By the name of Ibrahim ibn Mihzam, he says, خرجت من عند أبي عبد الله عليه الصلاة والسلام ليلة ممسيا. So I left the company of the Imam one night late. فأتيت منزلي بالمدينة. I went home. وكانت أمي معي. My mother was with me. فوقع بيني وبينها كلام. We had a dispute about something. What the dispute was is not important. And the intention is not drawn there. فَأَغْلَظْتُ لَهَا I was harsh with her. I was rough in her in speech. Okay. And maybe what I was saying was right. This is what Ibrahim is saying. فَلَمَّا أَنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْغَدِ صَلَّيْتُ الْغَدَى وَأَتَيْتُ أَبَا عَبْدِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ So the morning came, like a good moment. I got up, I prayed. I went again to see the Imam. This is not just some person, close companion. Once I entered into the presence of the Imam, the Imam began to speak before I even spoke. Ya Abu Mihzam, Ibrahim, Malaka wal Walida, Aglatta fi kalamiha. What happened that you spoke to your mother like that? It's not, the Imam is not asking what was your dispute about. They may have had a conversation about that too. He's asking what happened inside you that you allowed yourself to react that way, to respond that way. Where did that audacity come from that allowed you to communicate that way with your mother? And he reminds him of the status of the mother. Did you not know that her womb was a place of residence for you? That her lap was a cradle where you found comfort? And her breast was a container and vessel that you drank from? Abu Mahzam said, yes, I know these things. So the Imam says, Fala tughlit laha. I'm going to be clear. Don't speak to her that way. See, you and I get frustrated from time to time. They say, my, parent, my, my father, my mother says something. It has nothing to do with anything. They don't understand my life experiences. They don't understand my struggles. They don't understand the realities of my life. Or they think they understand. So that's frustrating. Yes, it is frustrating. No one is telling you not to be frustrated. But the solution of that, the solution of that frustration is not to act out and further destroy the relationship. It is to find understanding. It is to try and bridge the gap. Communicating poorly and reacting like that is not going to achieve it. Sometimes life works out the way that we don't anticipate. We think for us to be successful in life, we have to follow these steps. 
as society tells us. Most times they're also logical. You do this, 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 and that, and this is the conclusion. But we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many times shows us that the confidence that we have in these logic is not certain. It's unfounded. Look, if we want to find that success, we want to find that happiness, we want to find that good relationship, we want the imam to be happy with our conduct, we find it in those small moments, not just of sacrifice, but of, of humanizing them and trying to put ourselves in their shoes too. Now they always remind us, when you were a child, your parents cared for you. Right? There's not, a parent cannot just ignore the child. When the child has needs, they have to make the sacrifice in life. Right? But when they get older and you come of age, do you have to make the sacrifice? So one of the ulama narrates this story of the people that kind of had his, the eye of the barzakh open, sometimes as they say it. He could see things that we can see, should be seeing, if we prepare ourselves. So I used to go ziyarat of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam. And one night, in my sleep, I saw a dream, I saw a vision. I saw a young man who comes in to do ziyarat. He comes and says salam to the imam, as everyone does. Everyone who comes in is nukhul and says salam to the imam, does a ziyarat. So I saw the young man come, say salam, smiling, happy, and I can see and hear the imam responding to him, and the imam is also smiling and happy. Wow. He says, okay, I saw the dream, I woke up. A few days later, I went for ziyara. And as I'm there, I happen to see this dream play out. I see a young man that resembles the person I saw in my dream come in, he says salam, and he's smiling. And I think this is probably the, the same person I saw in my dream. So he hunts him down. He starts following him after he finishes his ziyara. He says, listen, this is the dream I saw. You have a story. Tell me your story. So the man said, yeah. What you saw is also what I'm experiencing. When I come and make ziyara, every time I come, the imam, I see and hear him, I make salam, he responds to me. I'm smiling, he's smiling. What are you so happy about? He says, my imam is happy with me. How do you know? This is what happened. He said, I have elderly parents. And we live far away from the area of the haram. So it's not easy for us to just come and make ziyarah. And because we don't really have means of transportation that's available, we have to alternate on a weekly basis who I take to make ziyarah and come back amongst my parents. So one week I take my mother, we go do ziyarah, and we come back. One week I take my father, and we just rotate. So one of the weeks that's my father's turn to go. I'm going, my mother comes and asks me, I really want to come too. And the son already knows, logistically, it's not possible. Because we don't have transportation. We have one horse or donkey or something. So I put my father and mother on it and I walk with them. But both of them can't go on. So he says, logistically, we can. I try to, you know, comfort her. We can go next week. I promise, you know, we've been doing it along. It's not your turn. It's okay. The time will pass. Do your ziyara from here. All these things. My mom insisted. I really want to go. Please take me. Maybe I won't live to see the next week. That's my turn. You know, sometimes elderly people speak this way. Oh, maybe I'm not going to be alive. So the son said, my, my mother speaking to me that way broke my heart. So when I first hear these stories, I said, this is impossible. But apparently people did this and do this to right now. He said, I put my mother on my back and put the father on the horse. And we started going. And on our way there, the weather also decided not to cooperate. It made things much more difficult. We got there, they both made ziyara. When we came back, my mother was so happy, she made dua for me. That's it. Okay. Next time I came for ziyara, I saw when I came and say salam, the imam is there, I can see and I can hear him. And the imam is saying, this is your 
reward. This is the sign that we are pleased with this type of relationship, with this type of, you want to call it sacrifice, you want to call it service, you want to call it kindness, whatever you want to call it. This makes us happy. So now you see us. Now you're in relationship with us, right? right? Who doesn't want to see the imam of their time? Who doesn't want to have that type of a correspondence where we say salam, they respond? We already know because the tradition tells us that the imams, they hear our salams. They respond to our calls. Right? In the idn dukhul. That's what we say. You know, every time we go for ziyarah, there's idn dukhul. We have to request permission to go in. And one of the clauses we say there is we, we bear witness that you hear our call and you respond to it. We can't hear it though. So as children in trying to build that relationship, maintain that, finding those things that makes your parents happy. Finding those moments that you can go, what we call, out of your way to make them happy. And a lot of times they're small things. It's the attitude that's important. This person is not competing with you in life. Right? Your mother is not competing with you in your educational success, in your corporate success, in your entertainment and leisure. They are not competitors. What happens when we're not able to be in good relationship? It has certain effects. Rawayat tell us there are a few things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will quickly show the result of our misdeeds. The punishment will be hastened. Quran sometimes speaks about the delay of punishment. Imla. Some things Allah says we will delay the punishment, they will see the reality of what they've done in another time. But sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will quickly show the punishment to you. I will hasten that. You feel it in your life. You make a change. Of the things that we have in Rawayat that hasten the punishment, is when a person has that sour relationship with their parents. Very quickly you will feel it in your life. I'm going to give you two examples, very powerful stories, about how the interactions that we have with our parents, sometimes our failures to show them that respect, to show them that care and love, Results in our living situations. So the first one is the story behind Du'a'i Mashlul. Many of you know Du'a'i Mashlul, right? It's a du'a of the paralytic, the supplication of the paralytic. Allahumma inni as'alika bismika ya bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim ya dal jalal wa ikram ya hayy ya qayyum and it continues. So there's a story behind this du'a, right? Many of these du'as have stories behind them. The story behind Du'a'i Mashlul is born out of the relationship between a father and a son. And the result of that is that the son becomes paralyzed. So one night, Imam Hussain and his father, Amul Mu'mineen, they're doing tawaf around the Kaaba. And it was, a, you know, it was kind of a social space. People would come make du'a supplications. A lot of times people that had hard times. Think about when you go ziyara next to the zari. People are really crying. They're asking for things. They're asking for forgiveness. They're making du'a and yaws. So they hear a voice crying loud. It's one of those really bad cries that you know something is really wrong here. And this person is crying, Oh, he who hears the prayers of those who are trapped in darkness. The imams observe this. I mean, when he tells him, I was saying, go call this man and tell him to come to me. So after this man finishes and has a pause kind of in his du'as, he says that the commander of the faithful has called you and he wants to speak with you. Okay. So they go to Imam Ali alayhi salatu and he says, what's going on? What are you crying about? What's your problem? al al are there to help people, Right? Sometimes it's financial, no problem, we help you. Sometimes it's not financial. So the man said that, I'm a younger person. I wasn't living a very Islamic life, so to speak. And again, we don't say this to judge anyone. It's just, it says, I was kind of seeking the pleasures in life. I, I wanted to live life to have fun. 
I wouldn't care whether something is acceptable, unacceptable, respectable. I just do whatever made me happy. Months of Raja, months of Shaban, it didn't matter for me. Okay. My father, though, practicing, he cared about me, like all fathers do. And because he was practicing, he was trying to encourage me to change my ways, become a better person. Okay. This annoyed me. And we butt heads from time to time. My father would say something, I would respond to him. My father would say something again, I would respond to him. I would say something, he would respond to me. You know, toxic relationship. So I used to avoid my father, and however much he tried to admonish me, I wouldn't listen. My character got so bad, and the desperation in my practice, he doesn't speak about addiction, but it very much sounds like that. He said things got so bad that I started to steal from my father. Right? I was, he was probably feeding some type of addiction. I'm, addiction doesn't have to be substance use or substance abuse. It can be anything. I needed to feed that. So I'd steal, do all these sorts of things. It pretty much like, you know, that basic level of respect was not there anymore. So one time my father really wanted to try hard. And he came, you know, as parents sometimes do when they say, you know, the last scene. So my father's making this scene and he tries to stop me from doing these things physically. And that's when I decided, because of the state that I was in, who is this person? He's just some other, some other person getting in my way. So I twisted his arm physically, literally. I twisted his arm and pushed him away. So I assaulted my father to satisfy the desires that I had in life and to feed those lowly pleasures. Okay. When I did that, my father made a dua if we want to call it that, or a nefrin as we call. And he expressed his displeasure and complained to God of my state. Okay. He says, as a result of what happened, my father passed away and I slowly began to develop this illness. He sh then showed the imam the right side of his body. He says, the right side of my body has been paralyzed. He said, it's been a few years now since this has happened and my father has died. And I keep coming here to ask for forgiveness and nothing's working. So then the imam says, okay, you made a mistake. You're here to make amends. Interestingly, the imam didn't chastise him he doesn't censure him the son has already understood what he's done doesn't give him an earful says you're ready to change now this is the way relationship this is he cares about him now this is the dua take this dua recite it and it'll help you and that's what the young man does and he comes back to the imam and he tells him that it worked okay so a few things to take away from the story Number one, sometimes in life, we will see things differently than our parents. If we don't know how to negotiate, resolve, compromise amicably and correctly, things will escalate and the relationship will begin to fracture. Either in the form of abandonment and isolation, that's one route, or it's in the form of this type of confrontation. And we have both of them in our communities. Many of us may have experienced one or the other, if not both. It's life. These things happen. That's the first thing. How are we going to respond to it? Now, you may say, I'm never going to physically fight with my father or my mother. This happens, by the way. Domestic abuse is an issue, not just between spouses but also between children and parents. But let's say it's less common. Okay, you may not twist the arm of your father physically, but you may twist the arm of your mother and father in the demands that you make and how you're in relationship with them. It's the same thing. Why is the physical more important than the emotional? Right? 
I'm going to find ways to also make sure that you feel the pain that I'm feeling, right? Isn't that the same thing? Only once they feel it and they are in pain, then they will understand. It's not healthy. It's number one. Number two, when a person has come and done something wrong and they need help, it's kind of a tangential point from the parent one, but it's still related. What is the response going to be? See, you say, again, he's imam. Imam already has a solution, like in his pocket. Allah has given him. So he gives him dua. But when someone has a problem like that and wants to f- come for a solution, who are they going to come to? And what are we going to give them? Right, so the extreme examples is, imagine someone came into the majlis right now, he was completely drunk. What would we do? And they say, we don't want to come and let him sit up here, he'll ruin the majlis. He'll disrupt the majlis, okay. But if we also turn him away, that defeats the purpose too. The person came here in search of community, in search of support. It's not correct to turn him away. And the third thing, to have hope that these things can change, even if we do make mistakes, we all make mistakes. To be courageous enough to own up to the fact that we've done that and then look for a solution. Especially when our parents are alive and especially when they're accessible. So that's the first story of Du'ai Mashlu. The second story is one that's a little later in life. This young man became paralyzed. This story is about a young man had died and there were engaging in the funeral rites. So when someone dies, what do we do? We have to wash the body, we have to prepare the body, clothe the body, and then before we put it in the grave, there are certain rites that we do, one of which is the talqeen, right? Talqeen is what? O you who's died, isma ifham. Listen, understand. So one of the great contemporary scholars, Jamal Golpaigani, he narrates his story. He says that they asked me to come and do a Funeral, and he's a great scholar, great marja, great uh, scholar who's worked on himself. Again, sees and hears things that most of us don't. He said, you're a great figure, please come. Our son also cared about you. He was a religious person, he was a practicing person. It would mean so much to the family for you to do the funeral rites. Okay, no problem. It's a religious obligation. So they come, they do all the other things, they're ready to put the body in the grave. And they're going to do the talqeen. So Jawal goes up to him and says, Isma ifham ya fulan ibn fulan. And because his eyes and ears are open, he can see the state of the barzakh of this person. The young man is telling him, I can't understand what you're saying. Right? When we're saying isma ifham, it means like listen and understand. Because you're training them. Because he can see, the young man is telling him, I don't understand what you're saying. This is a problem because the talqeen is going to be ineffective. Right? If someone can't understand what you're saying, the whole point is useless. So he starts looking around through the crowd and he says there must be someone or something here that's upset with him. So he finds two people that seem to be crying more than others and he asks, do the parents? He said yes. So he goes to the parents. Tell me about your son. Do any of you have a grievance with him? Is there anything that you haven't forgiven him for? No, 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 no. So he probes. And he asks the father, anything on your heart? Father said, I love my son. He was a good man. But there were a few times that he overstepped his boundary and he embarrassed me. This is a lesson for us younger people. You may be more intelligent, smarter, more experienced, more capable, You may make it much farther in life than your parents. Don't let that make you maghroor. Don't let that pride and ego lead to disrespect of your parents. He said, I'm not an educated person, the father said. But my son is highly educated. And in a few cases where we were discussing something and trying to problem solve, I gave my opinion and he dismissed it. And not only did he dismiss it, but he quipped, well, you're not educated in the subject. Your opinion is unimportant. Paraphrasing here, but something to that effect. 
this is a this is a very regular thing in one way or another that we may express to our parents. He said, that broke my heart. And it's not like I'm, I want him to suffer. It's just, it's remained with me. You know, it's something that I remember. It's an emotion that's still there. And the scholar says, right now is not the time for these things. Free your heart and release him from this. And bring it to your tongue that I forgive him. He does that, they go back for the talqeen. Isma ifham ya fulan ibn fulan. And the, the boy says, I can understand you now. Okay, said the talqeen, go. You know how they say the dua of your parents will open doors for you? And the unhappiness of your parents will close doors for you even at that level. Times of death. To make death easy, the happiness of your parents will make even that process easy. And their unhappiness will make that process difficult. So what about in lifetime? Sometimes, as children, we want something in life. And what we want is even good. But Islam tells us accommodating our parents is more virtuous. Okay, hold on. One of the examples is when a young man came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and he made a request. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa We're going to end with this. It says the call for support in time of war, jihad has come up, and I want to go serve. But I told my parents that I'm going, and they weren't really happy with that fact. So let's substitute that with something else. I told my parents I want to go, I want to move to this area of the country because of work. I want to move to this area because of school. I want to move to this neighborhood because it's a nicer neighborhood. I want whatever, whatever it is that you want. And your parents have a different opinion. What you want is reasonable. What they may ask is, in our eyes, unreasonable. There's nothing wrong in moving to pursue higher education. Many of your parents may have come here for the same reason. Young man told the Prophet, this is what's happening. I want to go and serve. And my parents are not happy. The Prophet said, for you to accommodate your parents, an accommodation here is for you to stay with them, to accompany them. It's better for you to be engaged day and night in this jihad for a year. So a whole year of whatever goodness that you're doing, non-stop, around the clock, the fact that you're accommodating your parents is more important. The accommodation is not just because they are better than you. There's a divine right and a dignity that is given, but the reason for that is the maintenance and the development of that relationship, of that community. So here's a few minutes of real talk. My brother and my sister, we, your parents came from a different country and lived in a different time. We said they're not your enemies, they're not your competitors, they care about you and they love you. I don't want to go out and say your parents are trying their best because I don't know them. It would be foolish of me to make that generalization. But we can say this much, if really we are humble, and we are cognizant of the humility. To emigrate to a different country, into a different culture, in a rapidly changing environment, and one that is not conducive to an Islamic life, is very difficult. It is almost impossible. Let us cut our parents some slack. Could our parents done a better job? Of course they could have. No one is denying that. Are our parents perfect people? No. Do our parents have emotional and personality flaws? Yes. 
Do our parents also need parenting? Yes. But those who emigrated specifically to this country, I can say with confidence, most of them didn't appreciate the complexity of what it would mean to establish an Islamic family and raise Muslim children. Now, that is not because they are naive or because they are ignorant or because they were completely uh, negligent. It's because really living in this society and raising a Muslim family is incredibly difficult. It's not easy. Yes, your parents may have certain priorities because what defined their experience and their immigration was the pursuit of a more prosperous life. Okay, we acknowledge that. We appreciate that. And for them to encourage you to also follow suit is not because they have a skewed understanding of the world and of the religion. It's because that's what they understanded the functionality of their immigration to be. That's what makes sense to continue to be here. Now as every generation passes, we reassess and have different ideals, objectives. So we have to make corrections accordingly. But how can we find a solution that is intergenerational of building, maintaining, and developing Muslim community? The purpose of us being here has to be United. And once we're able to establish the unity of purpose, then we can start working out the details of what the needs and the challenges of each generation are. We will continue to have challenged relationships with not just our parents, but with the community at large if we don't have, if we're not on the same page and we don't have the same aspirations. Remember we said communication. Take the opportunity of these nights to be in communication with your parents. Children, take that opportunity. Again, if you haven't already, have that conversation. What were you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to accomplish? What is it that we are trying to accomplish? Parents, have that conversation with your children. Then when the time does come for you to make a difficult decision because everyone is on the same page, it's easier for us to make decisions based on what the religion says, what rationality says, what logic says, and not what our emotions solely say. So have those conversations. Because it is through those conversations that we're able to find understanding, and then from there we can expand the community to outside of the home, inshallah. Let us recite salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. If we can dim the lights to recite a few minutes of musibah before we turn to Mata. On the second day of Muharram, this is when the caravan of Abu Abdullah arrives in Karbala. This has been a long journey. But this is where they settle. And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts on display the Imam's commitment and the Imam's sacrifice towards restoring that community. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Assalamu alayka ya ibn Rasulillah. When the caravan of Abu Abdullah traverses from place to place, getting closer to their final destination, they can see the Imam asking for the names of these cities, of these villages. Finally, when they arrive to this final place, 
The Imam asks once again, What's the name of this land? Fakila Karbala. Fakal Allahum anni a'udhu bika min al karbi wal bala. My Imam, they say the name of this place is Karbala Nainawa. Oh Allah, the Imam cries, I seek your refuge from grief and trials, from karb and bala. What are these grief and trials? Hada mawdi'u karbin wa bala. Inzilu, my dearest, come down, said camp. Ha huna mahattu rihalina. This is our halting place. وَمَسْفَكُوا دِمَائِنَا This is where our blood will be shed. وَهُنَا مَحَلُّ قُبُورِنَا And this is where our bodies will be buried. And our graves will be. بِهَذَا حَدَّثَنِي جَدِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ My grandfather, the Holy Prophet, has foretold me regarding this. The same prophet that was preparing the community for the calamity that would fall in this land. Narrated from Imam al-Baqir, they say whenever al Hussein would enter on the prophet, the Prophet would turn to Amir al Mu'mineen, asking him to protect his young boy. And then he would console him, hug him, kiss him, cry. Ya abati lima tabki. The Imam would ask, Why are you crying? Ya bunayya, my dearest Hussein. Uqabbilu mawdi'a suyufa mink. I'm kissing the areas on your body that the swords will strike. And I cry. As the caravan settles in Karbala, Abu Abdullah gathers the children, his brothers, the other family members. The Imam looks at all of them, shedding tears. He turns to the skies, Allahumma inna itratu nabika Muhammad. Allah, we are the progeny of your Prophet. وَقَدْ أُخْرِجْنَا وَتُرِدْنَا وَزِعْجْنَا عَنْ حَرَمِ جَدِّنَا We were forced to leave the sanctuary of our grandfather. Our rights were violated by these Umayyads. اللهم فخذ لنا بحقنا وانصرنا على القوم الظالمين Allah, take back our usurped rights from these oppressors. Make us victorious over them. This is how Ahlul Bayt, the caravan of Hussein, arrived in Karbala. At least when they arrived at this place of grief, at this place of trial, when they set up, all the men were there to comfort, to accommodate the women of Ahlul Bayt. When Zainab was introduced to Karbala, at least there was an Abbas, there was Ali in Al Akbar, there was a Qasim. They welcomed her, they honored her, they respected her. But how does Ahlul Bayt, the caravan of Hussein, leave the same Karbala? It is with the cries of Zainab, Ya Muhammad, Banatuka Sabaya. Oh, Muhammad, they've taken your daughters captives. Your children have been slaughtered. The wind blows on their bare bodies. This is how Zainab saw Hussein when they arrived in Karbala. But how does Zainab see Hussein when they leave Karbala? Wa Muhammad wa hada Hussein wa majzuz al-raz min al-ghafur.
<laughs> this is your Hussein that has been severed his head from his body. Masloobul Imamati Warrida. His turban and clothes taken as spoils of war. Ala ala natullahi ala al ghawm al zalimin. Wa sayalamu al ladina zalamu wa yamun qalabin yan qalibun. Matame Hussein. Ek 
तीर मेला प्यास आए कि तीर मेला प्यास बुझाने के लिए आए शबीर बया बा को बसाने के लिए आए शबीर बया बा को बसाने के लिए आए शबीर बया इंतजारा तेरे परदे की खुदा खैर करे इंतजारा तेरे परदे की खुदा खैर करे कल मगो आए हैं खयाम कल मगो आए हैं खयाम जलाने के लिए आए शबीर बया बसाने के लिए आए शबीर बया बा को बसाने के लिए आए शबीर बया बा शाहिदी का से मौसर को निछावर करके शाहिदी का से मौसर को निछावर करके अली अकबर की चले लाश अली अकबर की चले लाश उठाने के लिए आए शबीर बया शबीर बया को बसाने के लिए या हुसैन या हुसैन या हुसैन मौला हक के माम या हसन या हुसैन मौला हक के माम या हसन या हुसैन या हुसैन वो आब दे बीमार था वो आब दे बीमार था चलने से जो लाचार था चलने से जो लाचार था और शाम का बाजार था और शाम का बाजार था दी मुस्तफा की बेटिया मौला के माम या हसन या हुसैन मौला के माम या हसन या हुसैन या हुसैन या हुसैन शबीर की वो लाडली शबीर की वो लाडली सीने पे जो शाके पली सीने पे जो शाके पली जिसकी अबारन में जली जिसकी अबारन में जली मुँह पर तमाचो के निशान मौला हक के मांगा हसन या हुसैन मौला हक के मांगा हसन या हुसैन या हुसैन या हुसैन Brother Musammil is requested to come over and recite the azan. I think so. I think they're live streaming. It should be on the masjid site. Okay. I see. Just a recap of the last night.
Salawat. Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Ah Ashawallah, ilaha illallah. Ashawana Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashawana Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashawana Leon Waliullah Ashawana Leon Hajjatullah Hayya Ala Salah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala al-falah Hayya ala al-falah Hayya ala qair al-amal Hayya ala qair al-amal Allah Akbar Allah Akbar La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah Bar Muhammad Wali Muhammad Salawat Alhamdulillah, we really appreciate your attendance here. Um, your feedback is invaluable. It was suggested that the blue tapes be expanded from the men's side all the way to the ladies' side, so today you'll start to see that difference. Um, my request is as we start to build our own process and procedures here, that you use the tape as per your back foot. So if your back foot can line up with that tape, then inshallah our suffs can be straight, because one of the most embarrassing things is to be in Jamaat and our suffs are turning the corner just a few people over. So please please be mindful of that. I, I appreciate the volunteers putting the efforts in and getting that done. Um, but now that we have that done, let's follow that. So again, have your blue, your foot back to the tape, and inshallah, our selves will be completely straight. Bar Muhammad Wali Muhammad Salawat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa Ashadu anna aliyan waliyullahi wa annahu hujjatullah. Salawat Allahi wa salamuhu alayhi. حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح حيا على الفلاح حيا على خير العمل حيا على خير العمل قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر الله أكبر سبحان ربي يا العظيم وبحمده سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي يا الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر أستغفر الله الله أكبر سبحان ربي يا الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد كذلك الله ربي الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر أستغفر الله الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر الحمد لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سبحان الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر أستغفر الله الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر الحمد لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر
Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم استغفر الله الذي لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم ذو الجلال والاكرام واتوب اليه يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك بنسو سر ذا ريكويست فور دو اي سيت مي لا جي شفر اول مؤمنين هو ال ان اولسو مؤمنين هو ان ان ديفيكولتي May Allah relieve them, inshallah. Let's just try five times, Amma Yujib. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amma Yujib al-Mustarra idha du'ahu yakshifu suh. 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 اما يجيب المصدر اذا دعاه يكشف سوء برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم صل على ان مؤمنين وي بي ابولوجايز وي وي ميست ون اوف ذا سبونسرز سو اف يو كان بليز ريسايت اس سوره فاتحه فور مرحومه امينه ساغر والا ان محمد حسين جان محمد ان ان اول ذا مرحومين اوف ذا روجاني فاميلي ان ذا فاميلي اوف Brother Muhammad and Sister Mahasuma Karabjani, and, and include all of your Murumin also with a loud salawat. Allah-u-Akbar-Allah-u-Akbar-Allah-u-Akbar-Allah-u-Akbar-Allah-u-Akbar-Allah-u-Akbar-Allah-u-Akbar-Allah-u-Akbar-Allah-u-Akbar-
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر أستغفر الله الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد كذلك الله ربي الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر أستغفر الله الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر الحمد لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر أستغفر الله الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سبحان الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر أستغفر الله الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر الحمد لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته 
السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني أسألك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك والنجاة من النار ومن كل بلية والفوز بالجنة والرضوان في دار السلام وجوار نبيك محمد عليه وآله السلام اللهم ما بنا من نعمة فمنك لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك صلوات زيارة المعصومين صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا نبي الله السلام عليك يا محمد بن عبد الله خاتم النبيين السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب السلام عليك يا فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا حسن بن علي المجتبى السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله الشهيد بكربلاء السلام عليك يا علي بن الحسين زين العابدين السلام عليك يا محمد بن علي الباقر السلام عليك يا جعفر بن محمد الصادق السلام عليك يا موسى بن جعفر الكاظم السلام عليك يا علي بن موسى الرضا السلام عليك يا محمد بن علي الجواد السلام عليك يا علي بن محمد الهادي السلام عليك يا حسن بن علي العسكري صلى الله عليك يا صاحب الزمان السلام عليك يا شريك القرآن السلام عليك يا إمامنا وإمام الإنس والجان عجل الله تعالى فرجا وسهل الله تعالى مخرجا ورزقنا الله تعالى رؤيته السلام عليكم يا أهل بيت النبوة جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد عجل فرجهم <تصفيق>